Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for spending time on a Friday with uh, all of us uh, to learn a little bit more about the experience of our students in our, our Master in Global Business and Society at Yale SOM. Our GBS program, as we like to call it, is a one-year degree program for uh, students who have graduated from a master's in management program at the previous institution in international school. So we have with us today, thank you, because I know how busy our students are. So they are uh, giving us back their time uh, by sharing their experiences. So I am looking forward to the conversation that I'm gonna have uh, with them uh, this morning in, in New Haven time, uh, because I think it's very important to actually see what the journeys have been like so far, not only in the program, but also in the decision process in joining the program and you know, what were the motivations and the decision factors. And I think that's gonna help a lot of uh, candidates that might be considering joining the program right now. Before I turn it over to the important people in the panel, I, uh, I just wanna mention that there are two ways to access the chat because that might create some confusion when we start talking. So you can apply to the GBS directly through um, uh, our admission uh, rounds. We have three rounds. Or you can apply uh, jointly to your MIM degree program and the GBS. We have agreements with a few schools, the uh, ATC in Paris, HKST in uh, Hong Kong, and UBC Southern in Canada. And we have, uh, uh, with Bocconi, we have like a one plus one uh, uh, admissions path. But basically, the point I want to make is you can apply to both the schools before arriving to any of them, or you can apply directly to the GBS once you are doing the MIM or you have recently graduated from the MIM. Just um, to clear that out, because I know there are going to be questions. So I'm now going to turn it over to other students. Oh, before that, I also want to ask, um, I have two people with me uh, in the back end, who's Elena Heath and Evelyn Wilson. They are part of my admissions team. I want to um, ask Elena to please put our virtual uh, digital brochure um, on the chat to share with uh, all the attendees. And also you can ask questions in the Q&A and I will take all your questions at the end and, and hopefully we'll have time to cover everything. So stop about me talking and I'm gonna turn it over to the important people. So our students, if you could briefly introduce yourselves by saying your name, uh, the school where you did your master's in management program at, your hometown, past work or internship experience prior to joining SOM, and then one or two groups that, or activities that you are doing at EL SOM beyond the academic side of your program. So I'm going to start with you, Stephanie, because you're the first one on my Zoom <laughs> screen. So if you can kick it off. Yes. Uh, thank you, Camille. Thank you for the invitation to attend this beautiful webinar today. So my name is Stephanie Zhang, which is right here um, in my background. Um, uh, my hometown is China. Uh, I was born and raised in Changsha. And the MIM school that I did before SOM is HEC Paris, HEC Paris, and I did the Grand Conte God program there. Past work experience uh, pre SOM, I've done internship in equity sales, in um, equity research, business development, investor relations, and um, yeah, and entrepreneurship. And one or two Yale SOM groups that I'm involved in, I'm extremely interested in asset management. And that's why I have joined the um, Investment Management Club and Impact Investing Club. Um, very glad to be here. If you have any questions, please shoot at me. I'm happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Dorina, can, can you be next? Yes, of course. Um, thank you as well for um, having me here. And I'm super happy to help you guys. I also mentioned that I really remember when I attended this uh, webinar myself and I know how helpful it was. Um, so yes, to introduce myself, my name is Dorina Barna. My hometown is uh, Balaton Füred in Hungary. It's a super, super small town in, uh, in Hungary, but very nice. Um, where I did my first year management, it was at Bocconi in Milan, Italy. Um, 
past work experience, um, I haven't done any gap years throughout my studies. So I was always um, studying. So I only did internships. But my latest work experience is um, summer internship at McKinsey, which I'm planning to continue after graduation. Um, and I, what did I miss? So that what I'm involved in clubs at SOM, I'm very interested in private equity and that's a career path that I want to do in the long run. So I'm in the club, private equity club and I'm also in the leadership of the club. So I'm super involved with organizing many, many events, uh, private equity related. So yeah, I'm also here to answer any of your questions. Uh, feel free to reach out also after the webinar, you have my name, you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm happy to help. Thank you, Lorena. And last but definitely not least, Robert, can you share with us your introduction? Of course. Uh, yeah. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, I'm Robert Mukaberry, uh, originally from uh, Germany. Uh, my hometown is Bochum, Germany. I have lived a long time in Berlin in Germany, uh, but uh, yeah, my hometown is, is Bochum. It's not a very large city, but um, is it nice? I don't know. It's mediocre nice. Um, my MIM school is the HKUST in Hong Kong, where I did a, the master's program in global operations. And before I came to SOM, I uh, did internships in turnaround consulting with KPMG uh, in a fintech startup in Berlin called Raisin. Uh, and I also co-founded a, a company that deals with um, liquidity for private customers called MyWage. Also in Berlin, uh, one group that I'm involved in at SOM is the Consulting Club. They had a great curriculum uh, throughout the fall uh, term. They have great resources to really get um, get us um, on the track for, for consulting recruitment. Yeah. And uh, again, the invitation uh, is, is also for, for me. Reach out to me on LinkedIn um, or via email. Uh, I'm happy to uh, stay in contact with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Robert. Now that I have you, I'm, I'm going to continue with you for the first question, which is the obvious one. Why do you choose the GBS? I mean, you have already a master's degree from a top business school in the world. Why did you decide to actually continue your education with the GBS program? Uh, yeah, I, it was it was um, a multitude of reasons. Um, first of all, I wanted to... Um, to really up my technical skills uh, in a one-year master's program, um, maybe for a little bit of context. In Germany, master's programs are usually two years long. Um, so I was really, after one year of master's, I was thinking I could, I could use a little bit more technical skills, really dive into the things that I enjoyed throughout my undergrads and my, and my first master's. Uh, and um, by checking what kind of, um, what kind of courses uh, SOM and the GBS program in specific had to offer. Um, I saw there are a lot of courses that I can really use for 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 enhancing these technical skills. But then it goes beyond um, specific business skills. Uh, the the GBS program allows us to access courses at um, other schools at Yale. Uh, and even though I ended up only taking few of these in the end, um, I liked the idea of um, of seeing what my interests are at that time and sort of exploring what 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 else yell has to offer and then um since the the design of the gbs program is very um i would say unique in that you need this first master's program from another um gnam school um i was looking forward to a very global community to really get in contact with 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 people that was something that i enjoyed um during my time in hong kong and i uh, i knew that i i wanted to um to keep on like being exposed to other people from from different countries and that's and so far gbs has delivered thank you robert dorina <laughs> robert is mentioning the curriculum the opportunities to take class here and there and i'm sure our audience is wondering okay so what is this curriculum like like how how do you decide what classes you're going to take is it fixed do you have freedom can you share a little bit more the process of crafting the curriculum and then more specifically what classes you are taking and why you chose those classes? Yeah, of course. Okay. Um, I I think it's super flexible and I was very happy about it because at Bocconi, we were, it kind of felt like in a high school, like we were given a, a timetable. This is the courses that you have to take. You barely had any options to choose. I think compared to that, it's very, very flexible here. So in total, we have to take 
36 credits throughout the whole year, uh, which is 18 courses. Um, usually courses are two credits. Um, and from these 36, we have to take uh, 16 GBS. Please correct me if I'm if I'm mistaken. You're right. I will correct you, Jerome. You're right. Yes. yes. So 16 uh, credits of GBS courses, which means eight different courses. And these eight, we can select from a list of 15 different uh, courses. So again, like it gives, it's sort of fixed or it gives you a path, but there is a lot of flexibility within that. So you have to choose eight from that list of 15 given. This year, we were given one course, which was business and government after communism that was mandatory to take, but it was super, super interesting. So uh, I, I'm really happy that it was actually mandatory because I think I wouldn't have taken it otherwise, but it was a really nice experience. And then the rest is super flexible. So you can choose anything from the... Um, whole school of management and the electives you are taking with other MBA students. Um, so it's also, I think, a really good opportunity to get to know MBA students as well or EMBA students, not just GBS people. Um, and yeah, you can really craft it for your preferences. Like me, for example, I, I took a lot of uh, private equity related courses, uh, but I also wanted to kind of move out from my comfort zone and take some courses that help me gain some certain soft skills uh, that I think I'm I'm, I'm missing. Um, so yeah, um, I'm not sure if you want me to list all the 18 courses or 20 uh, that I took, but yeah, if you have like specific questions about specific courses, I'm, I'm happy to, to go more in detail. Thank you, Dorina. Stephanie, Dorina is mentioning, you know, taking classes with the MBAs, the MBAs, with people in other degree programs. So I want to shift a little bit from the academic side to the community at it, at it. So We're a small school, thousand students overall, around 80 full-time faculty members. What is the community at SOM like? How are you experiencing the community and, uh, and compare it to previous experience in your educational life? Yeah, absolutely. So um, as you've just mentioned, our community is not that big and we are all um, sort of work and study and live in a building called, uh, yeah, Yale, Yale School of Management. It's a very beautiful building. And I feel like comparing to my past educational experience, including Hong Kong U and HGC Paris, uh, our community is really intact and we are all connected with each other because SOM has a lot of clubs and we also have ASL that is always um, organizing events and parties and um, webinars, seminars for us. So you can um, take your chance to go to these events and then meet people from other programs. For example, I know um, a student committee is organizing closing bell every month and they're having extraordinary good parties like Halloween party and winter formal. Wait, winter formal is organized by ASL. But anywho, you can go to these parties and meet with people from different programs. And um, so uh, me, by going into this events, I have uh, many friends from MAM, which is another program at SOM and also MBAs. And uh, by chatting with them and connecting with them, I could always have useful insights about my career aspirations and et cetera. So it's been really useful. Yeah. Thank you, Stephanie. Robert, you were already very global before coming to SOM. You're in German, you studied in Hong Kong, now you came to the US. I wonder how your time at SOM has um, allowed you for, to share your global experience with other students and further developed that global experience. If, I mean, um, we are very proud to say that we're the most global business school in the U.S. So how will you um, explain that and how it has helped you and how have you helped us expand our global perspective internally at SOM? Uh, I think the way I help probably my classmates can, can, can answer that better, whether it helped <laughs> or hurt. Uh, that I was in their groups, um, but definitely uh, um, it was it was a different a different kind of international um, uh, here versus the other experience that I had so far. I mean, Berlin is a very international city, um, but still, 
uh, it was it was not quite the same. And uh, in Hong Kong, it was for me uh, very very different. I uh, really enjoyed the time there. I enjoyed being um, being exposed to a very very different cultural background um, that I enjoyed so much that I actually plan on 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 going back. Um, but um, how it compares to to the time here is here really even more. Uh, perspectives come together. So in our program, there are um, there are a ton of different nationalities, and in many courses, you end up being in uh, uh, groups together with people from so many different cultural backgrounds, and that uh, on the one hand leads to I would say different problem solving approaches uh, and ideas that um, that I would that I would have never have thought of, and then in the end they turn out to be really um, uh, really bringing the project forward. Um, but besides these business and work things, it also gives way to um, cultural exchange uh, informally. So um, be it food, be it festivities, um, you you will know a lot about uh, a different different things that that you're that you wouldn't get exposed to or that you would only get exposed to in a very specific place and here you get everything at once so um you you'll do um Diwali in the fall you'll do um lunar uh, or or spring festival you do that right now and uh, you do all the other things uh, as well and everything in, in in one single place and that is pretty unique in terms of uh com comparison to different different cities. thank you robert Serena, moving from Milan to New Haven. So, how is life in New Haven, and uh, how was the process like? What challenges you faced? Was it easy to get the visa to arrive in New Haven? Can you share a little bit, like your life now, moving from Europe to the U.S. and from Milan, big city, to New Haven, middle-sized city? How how is living in New Haven like? Yes. Um... Moving from Milan to New Haven, um, and then people tell you that New Haven is famous for its pizza, is a shocking <laughs> experience. For, for, for somebody coming from Italy, yes, yes. I, I get that. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah it's, um, it's certainly very different. Also, US, Euro, uh, US New Haven in general is very different from Europe and from like a big city in Europe, um, which take some time to adjust. Um, I think one of the key things where if I'm telling it to some of you who are coming from Europe is to stop searching for Europe in US because you will not find it. And then you might get disappointed. For example, if I'm in search for very good Italian pizza, I will probably not find it. But you have to be open for the American pizza, which uh, New Haven has to offer. Um, Yes, um, we do more, um, I don't know, um, formal moving process or side of it. Um, the visa was relatively easy. <laughs> it's kind of a lie. It wasn't really easy. Um, yes, so um, my visa process a little, was a little bit complicated. Um, but you shouldn't stress about it. Eventually, it will work out. I think like with the visa process, they like to challenge you sometimes, uh, but eventually it will work out. So, so no stress um, about that. Moving, um, for me, it was a bit hard because I like to carry a lot of stuff with me and a lot of clothing. So I required my whole family to come with me with many, many suitcases. Um, yes, and life in New Haven, I think why it's different, um, but also nice at the same time. Like for example, in Milan, Bocconi was in the middle of the city. So you got a lot of opportunities that a city has to offer. But at the same time, I felt that it wasn't really good for student life or student com community because I would go out with like one or two friends of mine for, for a dinner, which is a super nice in a super nice restaurant. But the I think like a community, student community wasn't really formed because of that. While here, um, maybe you will not find the fanciest restaurant in New Haven, but you go to Griffin's, <laughs> which is uh, which is a pub here where all the university students go. So you know that there are these few places where you go and you know that you will meet basically everyone from the school. And it's I think it's very, very nice. And it helps what Stephanie was mentioning, how you can how we form a community here in New Haven. Um, 
so yeah, uh, I think I mentioned a lot of different elements, um, but I hope it was sort of sort of clear. Um, yeah, it was. Thank you, Dorina. Stephanie, I am gonna ask you about uh, our CDO, the Career Development Office, and I know this is a a, a hard topic because a lot of our uh, GBS students would like to come and stay and work in the US. But in the US, a master's in management is not so well known, a GBS is not so well known. So the whole market is prepared more for the MBAs and people post experience. Um, but I think we're making progress and we're finding a lot of our students being placed in great jobs. But it is true that um, for the most part, it's outside of the US. So I want to set that straight. Nobody should join the program just because I want to come and stay in the U.S. That's hard. But I, I, I'd I, like for, for you to share the experiences that you be a student, because I know it's not just um, the, the ultimate goal of finding a job. I know they do a lot of activities, workshops, and there's a whole curriculum uh, the city puts together. So can you share a little bit um, your experience so far with the city and in the, in the activities that you have joined so far with them? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so yes, just as you mentioned, most of us just ended up not being recruited in US, but it's fine. This is us. We're super global. We're super international. Everybody got shifted into different parts of the world, which is super great. And um, my experiences with uh, the CDO is actually quite good. So I remember um, that the CDO was pretty very much prepared at the very beginning of our program. So in the summer, of 2022, which is the summer that before we joined, Natalie, the, the point of contact in CDO that is coaching us, our coach, she set up a whole uh, summer series program to help us understand what CDO can help with us and what's the tool that we could use. I remember that there was a deadline for us, a task for us to um, revise our CV into the GBS format and submit it into VMOC or some other website to get rated. And then a coach in CDO will help us to revise it. That was super duper helpful because I kind of need that nudge to get this done. And uh, when I start the program, the CV and also the cover letter is ready to go. That's very important. And throughout the past semester, I think Natalie is of great help because she's always available. She's the point of, she's our coach, by the way. And you can book part time um, over CMS, which is our um, portal. You can also um, email her with anything you want to talk about. Or if you see there's no, no availability on CMS, you can just ask her if she can spare 30 minutes for a mock interview or something. And what she could help us is a um, emotional support, which is extremely important for me. <laughs> Uh, B, uh, some um, technical advice, like what I should do when do networking uh, at this time period, what, what I should do, what to do to apply for jobs in U.S. and et cetera. And uh, more specific technical stuff. She can help you to revise your CV. She can help you to revise your cover letter, anything you want her to look over. And she can do mock interviews, but mostly behaviorals, uh, which is very important in job interviews. And apart from that, um, CDO also organized a lot of workshops, a lot of um, recruitment events, like uh, they will um, invite some recruiters in the US from time to time to maybe come to US or have a webinar, like what we're doing right now, to talk about um, their companies and open for recruitment. And I know that, for example, for US openings, there are structured programs, which is happening last fall, but there are also many spring um, recruitment opportunities that is happening in February and March. And I know that, uh, according to Natalie, SOM is prepared, CDO is preparing a lot of um, like job events to help us get recruited. So that is if you want to uh, work in the US, um, although that our recognition is not as big as MBA, but um, because you are from Yale, you are still very much wanted by other recruiters, so no worries. And if you want to work um, outside of US, for example, me, I wanna go back to mainland China or Hong Kong, um, the CDO resources is also very helpful because uh, first of all, there are some universal resources like how do you craft your story? How do you do networking? They're all the same, you can use that. Also, we have this extremely powerful alumni network you can get access to. 
And there are always some um, alumni that is working in an organization that you want to work in or work in a location that you want to work in. And all you need to do is to go to a document called, called who went where, and then you find out who is you know, going where, and then you connect with them from LinkedIn or um, the school email, and then reach out to the alumni to help you out with anything that you want to talk about. So yeah, I think they're pretty useful and um, I'm still working in my recruitment process. Thank you, Stephanie. You are already touching on my next question that I, I'm going to target to Robert, but again, anyone can feel free to, to answer, uh, which is our, the alumni network. So can you please explain a little bit more what is the, alum, the Yale alum, Yale SOM and Yale, a broader Yale alumni network like if you have any interaction with them? Have you had any exposure to the alumni, anything to share regarding our alumni network? Because I always say the alumni are the most important stakeholders. So they are the ones that, you know, prescribe our program, that recruit our graduates, that give the school money. So what, what is the Yale alumni network like, which you, the three of you, will be soon be a part of? Uh, yeah, uh, I, I definitely had interactions with them and I can only second what what Stephanie said that uh, you will find people uh, wherever you wherever you want pretty much. Um, I had a very specific um, kind of geography and industry that I was looking at that was for um, for someone from Germany not very um, not very usual and I was able to find someone from Germany that worked in the industry in the geography that I wanted and I reached out to him and he was super helpful we had a um, we had a we had an almost hour-long coffee chat um, just about how how is it as a German getting into that geography what kind of skills um, to um, to 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 look at throughout the year here at Yale what kind of things to look at in the recruiting process um, he he definitely uh, got me up to speed in in, in that process, uh, and um, also other interactions. For example, when I was um, when I was applying uh, for the program, I mean technically that was not really an alumni; that was a current student at that time, but it's an alumni now. Um, but I interacted with some people um, uh, from the program, and they were also super helpful, not only about the. Um, not only about the process at Yale, but also they gave me a lot of context um, just, just above and beyond because they also went to HKUST. So they could even give me some more information about um, the first school that I was that I was planning to attend. So it's not, it doesn't feel um uh, it doesn't feel overly bureaucratic. It doesn't feel like they only do chores, but it 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 feels like, and, and I think that's 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 also then true. Um, they enjoy the interactions with 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 prospective students, with current students, um, and they are really willing to help. Um uh, and um yeah, are just great people to interact with. Yeah, and I hope I can be uh, at least um at least somewhat as good as the people that I have interacted with so far. Thank you. You touched now on the admission process, and that is my main responsibility for the program. So I really would like to talk a little bit about your experience through the admission process. So uh, I know that um, we haven't any, we don't have any questions yet, but I know the first question or one of the first questions that is going to come up is the GMAT and the GRE is a mandatory. There's a minimum score. There's an average score. So I'm gonna. I'm going to answer that for, for all, all of us. And it's, yes, it is mandatory. There's not a waiver. We do require now, since last year, we require a GRE and, or a GMAT score. The reason being that we uh, want to be homogeneous with the rest of uh, our programs that require GMAT and GRE. But not only that, now this program and the MAN, which is the other program that is uh, connected to this one, but for a different audience, uh, th those two programs are now being open to all schools in the world, not just GNAM schools, so rounds two and round three. Anybody from a uh, master's in management program in the world can apply to the GBS. So before we would work with our GNAM partners and we would understand their admission test and take that test as um, uh, valid instead of the GMAT or GRE, but we are incapable of learning all the tests, admission tests in the world. So we're just going for the standardized tests. Uh, and so it is a requirement. We don't have a minimum score. We don't have an average score. This is only the second year. 
we are um, uh, asking for, for the test. So we look at every candidate holistically. So the test is just another data point. So I'm gonna take that out of the way because I know it's in everybody's mind. But uh, Dorina, can you tell a little bit about your admission process? How was it? What do you have to prepare for the admission? How was the process? How long did it take? Um, I don't know, anything that you wanna share about the admission process per se? Okay, okay. Uh, <clears throat> I think my admission process was not the very general one, but I think it was a bit unique one because I applied to Bocconi Masters in the early session and I got accepted like very early. And then I heard about this double degree opportunity with Yale, but then the admission to Yale was done through, um, through Yale, not through Bocconi. Um, I am one of the lucky ones who didn't have to write a GMAT uh, because of this early admission to, to Bocconi, but then apparently this is not like that anymore. Um, and the rest of the application, I felt it was very quick and very smooth. Um, it was one of the best application or admission process I've ever had in my life. Um, I heard about the opportunity, I think it was around September or October, something like that. And then I got my acceptance letter mid-December. So it was very, very, very quick. Um, and uh, yes, I think in the first round, I had to write several essays about myself, why I want to join ELSOM, why I want to do GBS. Uh, and then I, there were two more, which were the short-term and long-term career goals uh, that I would like to have and achieve. And after submitting these essays, there was one, it was um, this video interview when, yes, right. Uh, I think we had a couple of seconds to, to, we were given a question and then we had like a time frame where we had to record our answer and upload it. And then I think after the last round was, was a virtual real interview. Um, but yes, like overall, I had a very good experience. Um, I think also throughout the process, whenever I had some questions or uncertainties, um, everyone I reached out to was super helpful uh, throughout the process. So yeah, and um, <laughs> it was successful. So um, I think that's also one of the main reasons why I liked it so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dorina. Uh, a couple more uh, comments on this, um, because now I'm reading, so I'm finding I'm finding uh, things that are missing. So I just want to put it out there. Um, for the letters of recommendation, we asked for a letter of recommendation. We want it to be from a professional source. Even if it's just an internship that you've done, please do not send professors letter of recommendation. Send a professional, somebody that has worked with you, has been your supervisor, your client, a colleague, but somebody has known you in a professional setting. We are also getting information from uh, your program director, your dean, or at your school, or your uh, main director. So that's all we need uh, in terms of recommendation on the academic side. So please, for the uh, recommendation letter that we request, professional. Also, if you, so we need to know and see all your transcripts from all your uh, career so far. So there are some students that attend a university and they transfer and end up graduating in another university. Submit transcripts also from your first school. We need to see rates from all your career path. Um, those are things that come to mind because I'm dealing with those uh, reading uh, of applications right, right now. So I just wanted to make that, that point uh, clear uh, so that the process hopefully goes as smooth as Dorina's and we don't have to be back and forth and holding your application because, oh, it's not complete. We cannot read it yet. Uh, so just, just wanted to make those uh, two logistical comments. Uh, I want to encourage the audience to actually ask us questions. I am the one that is asking all the questions. I think this is what the audience want to hear. But if you have a specific questions that we're not covering, please uh, put them in the Q&A, and uh, I will definitely make sure that I read them out loud and that our panelists today um, can share uh, their views and their experiences with all of you. Because, again, they are 
uh, the ones that are living the experience that are uh, uh, have been in your shoes when you were uh, uh, deciding whether to do the program or not, and that are now leaving the program itself. So I would take the opportunity if I were a prospective student to basically ask any questions directly to them, which is better than uh, to us. So it seems like we have first question coming in. So, oh, okay, this is a great question. Um, so Stephanie, uh, yeah. how does your typical week look like at SOM? If okay. there's something as a typical week or every week is different. Uh, yeah, I, I can find the common stuff in every week. <laughs> Thank you for the question. Uh, so usually we start, uh, we have classes from Monday to Thursday. Friday is usually wide open for, I guess, homework and recruitment stuff. So what I'll do is that I have classes uh, in the daytime from Monday to Thursday. I usually have four or five courses um, per by semester. By, by semester, I mean, um, it's like half a whole semester in fall or spring. For example, now we're in spring one. And then, um, so apart from taking classes from Monday to Thursday, I will also obviously do my homework and uh, get my readings done. And I will usually schedule um, two or three coffee chats over the, over the week uh, with alumni or seniors or friends of friends that I want to talk to. And uh, usually, because we're always in a recruitment session, uh, sorry, yeah, recruitment period. So I usually have uh, interviews or online tasks that I need to do during the week as well. And on Friday, um, because it's wide open, uh, you have a full time to do whatever you want. And because Friday is connected with Saturday and Sunday, so usually I will choose to like, apart from working, obviously I'll go to New York or other cities that is nearby to have fun or maybe go to East Rock, go to the gym and et cetera. And um, I think on Thursday night, we also have the closing bell, right? I, I Correct. kind of forgot. It's the, it's the Thursday night. Yeah, so sometimes you have, you have party on Thursday, which is super great. So you can go to party. And also um, over the week uh, weekend, our GBS, um, for example, Dorina is from our GBS party committee. We also have parties. So you can go out and hang out with your friends and et cetera. And uh, that's the weekend. Um, and that's it for a week. Uh, in total, I think the general feeling is that everyone is super busy. You will be super busy at Yale as well because the workload is not small, I would say. <laughs> Uh, you will need to try hard to get your homework done. And also because this is a one-year program. So um, if you're not coming uh, coming to GBS with a with an offer in your pocket, with a satisfying offer in your pocket, you'll always be in a recruitment period. So recruitment plus academic workload, this is usually hard. And plus you need to social and also you need to you know get fit. So you need to go to the gym. So you will be super busy but I really enjoy it and I'm finding my rhythm. So I love it and hope you will love it too. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Uh, Robert, we have another question and uh, I thought I'd read the first one. The first one is what was a typical week look like at SOM? Somebody's asking like, oh, we didn't hear the question. So next question, Robert, what surprised you the most about GBS program and about SOM? What was like a big surprise that you didn't expect? Uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, it it revolves around the people that are here, uh, and I, I expected uh, I expected it to be very formal. Um, I had this this kind of this kind of impression in my in my head of like people that are constantly just working and uh, and like always. I don't know, being being tied up in in very advanced things, um, and and that is that is true. Sometimes people are working very hard here. People are very uh, inspiring in in that extent. But also, um, people are incredibly fun to hang out with, and that that is true for um, for people in the GBS program. Um, but that is also true for the 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 SOM community in in general. So we have a lot of interactions with with people from different programs. And whenever you you speak with them, you see like, oh wow, they have been um, they have been doing this, or they have worked at that company that I find really interesting. And and then it's not like you can't approach them uh, because they're so busy or so I don't know 
uh, far away from you. Um, but it's just like, hey, why don't we grab a coffee? Why don't we uh, go out for um, for for dinner? And and that's just that's possible. And I I don't know why I had this kind of like negative um, uh, idea in the beginning, um, but I think I was just afraid. Um, and and then seeing that this is very different, that people here are really people and great people, um, uh, that that surprised me. Um, uh, yeah, I, I don't want to say I expected anything negative. I just expected it to be less personal and it and it's surprisingly personal. Yeah. Can I add on something to that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I have that same um, feeling before joining SOM because I feel like Yale is an Ivy League school and you're so prestigious. Everyone getting into this program should be super smart. And it turns out, yes, they are super smart and they come from great companies with great backgrounds. So uh, no, nobody, like everyone is super busy. However, um, just like I mentioned before, we have this club. So for example, I joined this in the Impact Investing Club, and um, the committee is super helpful that they actually con contacted a few uh, very experienced professionals that used to work in VC or PEs and have them uh, scheduled a week of uh, free time in that week to um, have coffee chats with us. So you could just log in to that uh, Google Doc, no, not Google Doc, Google Excel, and then book a time for, with them. This is super cool. And then I uh, actually chatted with Charlotte. She uh, used to work in a really big VC in um, the US and she was super helpful after uh, this coffee chat. Also, she introduced us with different uh, personnel in SOM or in alumni and et cetera. And I also know that um, there are very um, keen people that is organizing a mentorship program among SOM students. So for example, pairing GBS students with um, the second year MBAs to ask things about life in New Haven and also how do you get a job in the US and I also apply for that program I got a mentor who's really nice uh, a second year MBA and we have coffee chats and go to dinner together yes they're busy but they're also very nice people I guess like Yelp people are just really really nice so don't be afraid to reach out yeah yeah, I, and I think also to that point, like it's true for students and the, the community that we have, <clears throat> but I think, sorry, what was also very surprising for me is that it's the same for the professors, um, <clears throat> that they are also so approachable and these are like industry professionals with a super, super amazing career. And it's so easy to go up to them and ask for any help. And they are super helpful all the time, although they are incredibly busy. Um, so for me, that that was also very, very surprising. Yeah. Perfect. We have another question. Uh, and I, I'm not gonna target it to any of you. So whoever feels like wants to answer, please do. So what has Yale done differently with the GBS program that has prepared you better for the career that you are uh, that you have experienced in your undergrad or other master's programs? Like what added value has Yale delivered to you? Um, I, I, I think I can answer this one to some extent. So uh, I think most importantly is two things, are two things. The first thing is the curriculum, just as um, I think what Dorina has mentioned, it's extremely flexible. So you only have two credits that is mandatory. Uh, however, that course is also very interesting. <laughs> so it's not a waste to be sure. And the other 34 credits are just what you ever wanted to do to pursue your career aspiration. That's really important to me because my career aspiration um, shifted um, when I joined GBS. And for example, now I'm taking a lot of um, the courses about macroeconomic situation and marketing. You can always find the exact courses that you want, like uh, like you want to take. That is super helpful, and the professors are super helpful as well. Yeah, so I guess that's that's what's really different. Because, for example, in HEC Paris, I don't know if you guys are in there before. Um, the 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 curriculum is set. It's it's like a high school, so you can't change it, and you're just being told to to go to which class you want. This is also great because since the first degree, as, my, as I understand, it's a foundational um, period for us. However, I still want to have the liberty and flexibility to pursue my own interests. And that's what Yale can give you. And the second thing is about, it's actually connected with Yale's mission. Oh, sorry, SOM's vision 
of um, nurturing business leaders that genuinely care about the society and our problems. And I feel like this is really connected to Yale's liberty, liber, liberal arts tradition. And uh, I feel like every part of Yale is dedicating to that mission. And we have so many events, so many webinars to talk and so many courses to address the problems and to encourage us to think as a global leader. This is what is different from HSC as well, and also maybe Hong Kong U. And you really give me a bigger sense, a bigger picture of the world situation and encourage me to think what I could do about it. And, you know, just raise the awareness and um, the sense of global citizen is, is really cool. Yeah, I hope this will help. Thank yeah. you. I don't, I, oh, sorry, Dorina. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, sorry. So just to that, I don't know if it's also true for you, but what I felt is that it's a lot more practical, uh, the yeah. teaching method compared to European universities. And I can I think I can say that in European universities in general. So the teaching method is not that you receive a this big book that you have to learn from the beginning to the end, and then you have to sit an exam. But also the workload, what Stephanie was saying, it's um, quite busy, but busy in a sense that you have to deliver a lot. But it feels like when you are working, actually. So you have assignments to do, you have problem sets to do, but it's a work given to you that you have to solve, you have to uh, submit, but it's it's very different than learning things by heart and then repeat it at, at the exam or replicated at the exam. So I think it also gives a little bit different approach to many things that I think is very helpful later in your career um, career life and, and also prepares you a lot to how it's going to be in the real work environment. Thank you, Dorina. I'm going to combine the next two questions because they are uh, both related to uh, career paths. And I don't know if any of you is uh, in, interested in, in this career path, but there is uh, two questions that, again, I'm going to combine regarding uh, nonprofit career tracks and entrepreneurship, career tracks and resources within SOM. So again, I do not know where you're heading. So can any of you, because of personal or because you have close friends that want to go into nonprofit or that are interested in entrepreneurship and are leveraging resources at Yale, uh, can you speak a little bit about these two potential traps that are not as common as the regular consulting and investment banking? Um, yeah, maybe maybe I have I have a couple of points on, on that. Um, so. Uh, in terms of entrepreneurship, there are, uh, of course, clubs that you can join, and they are um, they are a really great resource um, to sort of connect with like-minded people. And these these clubs are quite um, popular, so it's not like you are there with five other people that like read about entrepreneurship. But no, it's it's more like people that have experience in 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 that sphere um, uh, that 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 are together there working on on things. Then there are a lot of professors that are um, active in entrepreneurship as well. Um, so you can reach out to them. They're like they're readily accessible. One of my professors in the last term. Um, uh, founded companies himself now is teaching but in case you want to reach out to him about certain things that that was always that was always um, uh, that was always possible and about nonprofit, I have fewer information about that but I know that there are events there and I think there is also a club for that I, I don't have I don't have a ton of insights and then there is the public impact fellowship which is a program that gets you involved with um, with um, I mean not really nonprofit, but kind of public sector work um, in the in the Connecticut area. As I understood it, it's also possible for people from abroad to join this um, public impact fellowship, uh, and then maybe get a foothold in the kind of public sector here in the in the United States, um, uh, which can also be an interesting pathway maybe to to finding uh, long-term employment in the U.S. Thank you, Robert. Uh, to complement that, uh, there are multiple alumni that have gone into the nonprofit world. So 
We are unlike all the business schools that really specialize in consulting and banking. We have uh, alumni all over industries and, and sectors. So uh, we do have a strong connections with the nonprofit. We do have a career coach just for that industry. So if you are interested, definitely we do have uh, pathways for the nonprofit. That's part of our mission. As Stephanie was saying, we educate leaders for business and society. And so a lot of our students end up in the public sector or, or nonprofit sector. Regarding entrepreneurship, we do have entrepreneurship suite at SOM, as Robert was saying, with a lot of resources. But those that are interested in entrepreneurship have a broader network at Yale University. We have the Site City Center, uh, which is an incubator for the whole university for projects. We have something called Yale Ventures as well that connects um, us to the city of New Haven as well, and that uh, students can help you know, ventures that are uh, being um, launched here in our community. So there are, there are multiple resources for both uh, pathways as well for you, for you to explore. Um, there is a question about work opportunity on campus. So I will just say the students can work up to 20 hours a week, no more than that. If you are a student, you cannot work more than 20 hours a week and you can only work on campus. So it's not like you can take jobs outside of, uh, of, of campus. There are many positions. I don't know if any of our students have done any work or, or know any students that are working as teaching assistants or helping out, uh, at, I don't know, orientation ambassadors or any, any of those roles that are possible. Do you know anybody or should I? Uh, yeah, I, I know. Um, <laughs> sorry, that's a question. So I have a friend who took, uh, I forgot the class name. So she took a class in fall semester and she got really good grades. And um, so the professor was recruiting for TAs um, before this semester started and she applied for it and she got a job and she's now the sole TA of that class, which is super exciting. and. She, not that exciting actually she go to the classes take attendance and maybe help grades uh, grading grading your papers and you know just help out the professor to 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 deliver the course mm, i think i think they will pay her and then you can get an ssn yeah yes that's correct we have a, another question that is actually very interesting that i should have thought of so is any of, of you pursuing the stem the uh concentration in management um, science can you talk a little bit about how does that work and how is your experience so far? Yes, so it's um, back to the very first thing I, I um, answered. So like how we have to take our credits and the courses. So then we are required to take 16 credits GBS. And in order to get the STEM concentration, you, you have to take, is it 16 or 18 credits? 16. 16 credits as well, okay. So it's 16 credits of STEM. Um, qualified courses. This is also a very long list, actually, the courses that you can choose from. Um, they are a bit tougher, if I can say. They, they are um, more data science related um, courses, usually. Um, so you, it's good if you have some mathematics or statistical background, uh, but it's not required. Um, and yeah, so you have to take 16 credits of these STEM courses. Uh, but to be honest, I'm really enjoying them. Uh, I think it's it gives you a very useful knowledge uh, that, that you can leverage a lot in the future. And then with the STEM concentration, if you do these uh, certain credits, it, you are eligible for a three-year OPT visa. So after graduation, you can stay in the United States and you can work for three years. Um, that's why it's that's why I'm also doing this, and uh, that's why I think it's worth the very data heavy courses. Um, yeah, there's a caveat to that. You need a job offer, right? I so, so yes, you are eligible to stay for three years in the U.S. without a H-1B visa or a working visa, but you do need a job offer. So, and just putting that out there because the job offer is out of our control and anybody's control. So hopefully that will align and 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 everything will work out. But 
you do need a job offer to be able to enjoy OPT. The OPT stands for Optional Practical Training. Okay, we are reaching the end. I can't believe it's been almost an hour. Um, so we are, yeah, five minutes away, and I want to finish on time to be uh, respectful to our attendees' time and our panelists' time. So my last question for the three of you, and I, I, this one is for the three of you, so I want all of you to answer it, is what piece of advice would you give to somebody that is right now considering applying to the program? What things would you like to have known that you didn't, that would have been helpful if you were now in, in applying, either in the process of applying or in the middle of the application process? Um, for for me, if I, I can go first, uh, it's actually something that I did know and um, um, GBS student that I reached out to this exact same panel setting, um, he told me this advice and I think this was the key that helped me the most is to really have your story, who you are as a person and what you will bring into this community and really how GBS you think will help you for your future. I think if you really have this whole story and you can really explain why you need this program in your future and it's not just because it's Yale, um, I think I think that's, that's the key. That's really the key. Um, for me, that was super helpful. And I really, it, it was very funny. Like I literally sat down with a pen and paper and I was like drawing like, okay, where do I want to be five years from now? And why I need this program to be there five years from now? And I think this is this is one of the most important things and one of the best advices that I received and what I can give you. Thank you, Dorina. Yeah, that is actually what I want to say as well. Um, just you really please make sure that you know why you wanted to apply for SOM, specifically speaking this program. And uh, because GBS is a really special program that we are a um, advanced master in management degree over a master in management degree that you already have. So please make sure that you understand and also you can articulate well why you wanna have a second uh, master program. This is super helpful in this um, application process. Also very helpful in recruitment process because the recruiters always they're gonna ask why why are you having a second master degree that just like confuses them a lot. And also um, what I wish I could have done when I was in my recruitment oh, sorry application process is reach reaching out to um, student ambassadors in GBS. I did that when I was writing essays for SGC Paris. I did not know why I didn't do that while I was writing um, essays for GBS. This is such a mistake. So over the fall semester, there are a lot of students that approached me and we had coffee chat together and they were super inspiring, to be honest. And they asked questions, very insightful questions. And I, and I think most of all of them got, get the admission letter already. So uh, that's what I would have done when I was in the recruitment process to really reach out to current students and ask them um, the questions that you want to ask. And then most importantly, connect that with connect the resource in GBS to your story and elaborate. Why do you think you need a program to help you success? Why do you think um, GBS can help you? And exactly what is your career goal? And uh, lastly, just be confident you're going to success no matter what. And um, yeah, this program can help you and you are really valuable and you are a great fortune for us uh, to join the community. Thank you. Robert, two minutes yes. left. Anything to add? Uh, yeah, I mean, second all of, of what uh, Dorina and Stephanie said, um, I, I would I would suggest to, to do a lot of uh, research, uh, research about the courses that are offered here. Um, research about um, uh, the general structure of the GBS program, um, and then uh, and then another second um, uh, reach out to people that are currently taking the program. Um, I was I still remember why I didn't do it at that time, or I did it very late in the process. I was afraid that um, if I if I mess up the um, kind of like um, approach, if I text them in a too informal or too formal way, then this will decrease my odds of getting admitted. I was really afraid that this is all like one group that sits together <laughs> and then, and then, and then we'll, we will sit in one room and then we say, oh, you know, that person approached me in a weird way. 
um, better not take them. And that's that's not the case. Um, that's not the case. Um, the, these these things are are separate, and this is just your resource. So reach out to us. Uh, no no worries. Um, uh, we will not um, we will not be able to tip the the thing <laughs> in your favor or out of your favor. So just um, just reach out. I I would have liked to know that um, before. Thank you. I promise. And do it. I mean, and 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 submit the application. Um, uh, I know it might feel intimidating to to send send an application. Um, I I was a little bit afraid of doing that. I was oh, can I can I really get in there? Um, and then and then it was good that that I took the lead faith and I would really encourage you to do it and I, I promise we do not know the conversations that happen among <laughs> our students and our prospective candidates we 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 do not get involved into that so thank you so much to our panelists uh thank you so much to our attendees I just want to uh, encourage everybody to submit an application if you think this is the right program for you our next deadline is February 22nd so there's still plenty of time. Again, this round is open to uh, students and recent alumni coming from Global Network schools, but also from not Global Network schools. So anybody that is pursuing or has recently finished a main program, we're go gonna be very uh, eager to review your application. We are not giving preference to schools over other schools. So we just want the best and the brightest. So regardless of where you've done your main program, and uh, we still have a third round, which is in April. I'm blanking the exact date, but it's on our website. So uh, February 22nd for, sh for sure. And then April sometime, I want to say 11th or sometime around April 11th. So thank you so much, Dorina, Stephanie, Robert. Uh, best of luck for the, the rest of uh, your studies at Yale. And thank you, everybody else, for attending the webinar. It will be, it's been recorded and it will be posted on our website as soon as it's ready. So thank you, everybody, and have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Good luck. <laughs>